This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, therapy has helped many of my friends and family. There is no need to feel bad or ashamed about going to therapy. Getting help is a part of the journey, and that's what BetterHelp does. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help you. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships or at work. Or you just have a lot on your plate. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. Right now is a special offer to my listeners, Lay Your Brick listeners. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash LYBCADE. That's betterhelp.com slash LYBCADE. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Welcome back to another episode of Lay Your Brick. This episode... We have Claire Richardson back on the podcast. She's back. She's talking about love, relationships, all things dating. We dive into literally everything that you could possibly think about with relationships and dating and everything. So please open your ears, be ready, and learn something new. Hope you guys enjoy. Claire, it's so good to have you back. You Thank are, you. I, I don't know if you know this. I told you this earlier, but you are the most viewed podcast that I have right now, the episode that I have out. So yeah, it's, so it's highly suggested. Um, just to break down what we're going to do, Claire and I are just going to talk about relationships, love, everything, everything that she's passionate about and everything that we talked about before, but it's going to dive deep into different stuff. So I'm super excited for this. Um, I cannot wait. And Claire is ready to Talk down hand, ready to gossip. So is there anywhere that you kind of wanted to start or – um, I mean, how, how's, I guess I'll start. How, how's your love and your relationships been since we did the last podcast, which was in May. I'll remind you, I think it was just like almost a year ago now. Yeah. Um, you know, different, actually very different. I feel like I finally entered into my twenties. I've listened to a lot of podcasts about this stuff because I've been feeling very lost and confused and conflicted when it comes to friendships and relationships um I think like my first year post-grad uh in your 20s is like a very interesting time and I started out like not having a ton of friends here in Los Angeles and that was very difficult and now I kind of have like a little bit of a friend group a couple close friends slowly like taking time to get to know different people uh but my relationships have definitely evolved a ton since last May and people I was surrounding myself with a year ago. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've got, for those of you that do not know, I mean, Claire, she is accomplished. She graduated college. So Whoa. that, that was big. Right. We, Cause you didn't re graduated then. I don't know. You're probably just about right. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. Was it that in was... April? I felt like it was like, I felt like we did the podcast around Easter. Didn't we? Yeah, maybe, maybe it came out in May then, maybe. Well, oh, yeah, it came out in May, but I, we did it in Easter. Did, okay, that yeah. makes sense, yeah. So, yeah, you, you've had a – let's put the thumbs up there. <laughs> <laughs> We're on Zoom right now for this, so she put a thumbs up for some reason. Okay, <laughs> anyways, uh, let me pick your brain about something because this is this has been super on my mind. I, I jotted down some stuff, and I wanted to see what your your take was on this. So um, I was watching a video, and it was it was on TikTok, of course. And it was talking about this girl was saying that when you meet your person, your soulmate, whatever you want to call them, you get a feeling of either a hell fucking yes or a hell no. Okay. So this, this is just the scenario. And what I thought they meant by this is like, you can meet a really good guy, woman, whatever, and you can feel a connection. But like, if it's not a hell fucking yes, then they're saying like, move on from that. And here's my problem with this. Okay. I think that relationships and connections with people just in general need work. I think the biggest thing that we could do in a moment and everything like that is, and in relationships is to just leave it all up in the air and be like, this is supposed to be a fairy tale. I don't, ha I shouldn't, it shouldn't be this hard. Um, I shouldn't have to 
feel this way or feel this hard, whatever. And I feel like there's a misconception there. I want to know your obviously take on this, but that it, it trips me up because I feel like it doesn't make sense. You have to work on things for them to be great and better, right? Like just yourself, you yeah. have to work on yourself in order for yourself to get better. So like, do you believe in that whole thing of either it's a hell fucking yes or a hell no? Um, no, I don't think so because I think it depends on the person because some people make a little bit more tend to make a little bit more impulsive decisions sometimes you know what I mean like I feel like some people you know meet someone they know for two months and they're like this is my person and then they are right and some people do it and they get married in a few months and then they're completely wrong you know like I feel like it goes I think it goes both ways I feel like um I know instances of both recently actually I don't think I talked about this yet but one of my friends from college um was like single and like literally posting on tiktok like during christmas like oh my gosh like i'm on my 51st date finally like blah 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 all this stuff and then wow. met this guy in january and posted of the day like she's literally engaged to be married and they've been together for like a couple months and i asked her like oh my gosh how long has it been she's like long enough to know and that's it and so really? i think some yes yeah, so i think it depends on the person i think that like um you know sometimes like you can meet someone uh when they're at a place in their life where it's not like they're immediately ready to be married you know and that can affect like how long it takes to like be like hell yeah you know what I mean like some of the best relationships start out as friendships and when you meet someone as a friend maybe like then you spark a connection you're like oh heck yeah this is like my person as a friend and then it evolves into more later but I don't think it's as black and white as like heck yeah or heck no like immediately when you meet somebody I think that's just like too soon to tell and not everyone's like super open honest and upfront when you meet them in the first place anyways you know people deal with a lot of trauma around those types of things and take a lot of time to open up to people you know what do you think about opening up let's dive into that because it's really hard for some people right and it's really easy for some other people too and i will say that i think people that go through certain things um experiences it's way harder to open up right but like we shouldn't let our past define us correct i mean yeah, no, I don't think you should let your past define you at all. But I think that um, it definitely is going to influence you whether you like it or not. I feel like sometimes um, I feel like one thing I've learned um, and granted, like for everyone listening, you know, I'm 22. I'll be 23 in, in, in the next few months. Right. Like I'm still super young. Got a lot She's to a PhD learn, you know, in this, so. a PhD in love. No, but I think that um, when it comes to opening up to somebody, you know, sometimes your past experiences can definitely affect how you feel in the present about a person or a situation or an experience you might you may be having um but I feel like one thing I've learned is that like you can't expect to have relationships if you don't open up right so if if you don't want to open up and you Mm want to stay you know secluded in your own heart and your own mind like that's totally acceptable if you're going through processing your own things but when it comes to being in a relationship and having a connection with somebody you can't do that without opening up. So I think it kind of comes yeah. down to what are you looking for? And I think for me personally, you know, when I first moved here, I wasn't as much as I thought in my brain that I was like, I'm ready to open up to new people. I'm ready to meet new people. I really wasn't, you know, I was just kind of like, I want to do my own thing. I want to be by myself. Like I miss my boyfriend or whatever it was. And I think that, you know, as I grew by myself living alone, you know, I realized, okay, like, I kind of know who I am a little bit more now and I'm ready to open up to people about who I am and my experiences. And obviously I don't, even like my best friend here now doesn't know like every little thing about me. Right. Like it takes time to know things, but, um, you know, she definitely knows more about me than she did three months ago. Like you, once you meet someone, you know, when you feel comfortable opening up, it just takes time. I mean, I'm definitely with someone who opens up a lot faster than like the normal individual, but me, still me too. me too. Yeah. We're like that. Yeah. So it depends, but I also was reading, or I was listening to a podcast. It was another one with Mel Robbins. Um, okay. And, yeah, and she was talking about how, as an adult, once you're like a- adult, out of school, whatever, right? It takes, um, so like I think it's like in college, it takes a certain amount of hours to like feel close to someone. I want to say it's like fifty hours of time spent together or something like that. I, that yep. these numbers are probably wrong, but like the idea is that it takes a lot shorter amount of time where like once you're graduated from college and you're like on your own and you're doing your own thing and meeting different people from different walks of life, it takes, I think it was nearly like double the amount of hours to like 
feel close to somebody. So it's like if it's 50 in college, it's like 100 out in the real world. And I mean real world, just like, you know, outside of high school and college when you're constantly with people. Like outside of that, it takes like double the amount of time to feel close to someone just because you don't spark a connection based on hobbies because you probably don't meet all doing all the things that you normally do. You know, we're in college. It's like you have classes in gen- you have classes in in this same school building or you have friends, the same friend group or you have hobbies or whatever. But once mm-hmm. you're like out working, you know, like sure, maybe you have the same job. But that doesn't mean anything outside of your job is even compatible to theirs at all, you know. It's a very good point. I mean, I, I've talked to several people my age and and around here that I've made friends now. And I think one of the huge home hitters that we talk about all the time <clears throat> is that at our age, we meet somebody and whatever that somebody is, your life, whether you like it or not, does become part of theirs, right? And so I feel like, what we talked about, what I say all the time is that your hobbies become their hobbies and their hobbies become your hobbies because you guys end up doing that. Now, there's a positive way to look at it and there's a negative way to look at it. And I think it's not even really negative to look at it like this, but their hobbies becoming yours, like the problem with that is that you don't really get to explore much different hobbies if it's a certain relationship, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it maybe it depends on the relationship. Maybe it depends on the people. But like you don't really get yeah. to explore everything that you could, especially at our age, how young we are, 20s, right? When you could be exploring. And it doesn't mean like that person's tying you down. It just means that like you're gonna miss certain things because you are with that person and you're doing the things that that person likes and that person and what you like. And so that yeah. was kind of the biggest thing that we always talk about. But I think it also like depends on what kind of relationships you're talking about. Like if you're talking about like casually dating somebody versus like I'm in a serious committed relationship versus like we're literally just friends, you know, like it definitely depends. And I think one thing like another thing that Mel Robbins was talking about was like (laughs) was um, just kind of about how like the things that become like normalized when you're around somebody. So, for example, like if you're like you are really similar to the people that you hang around with, whether you like it or not, and whether it's a positive thing or not, right? So if you surround mm-hmm. yourself with people who eat healthy, you're going to probably start maybe eating healthier. If you surround, surround yourself with people who are all divorced, you're going to start normalizing the idea of divorce. Like it's, yeah. it's not, and it's not like unnecessary, like a super positive or super negative thing. It's just kind of one of those things that's in the middle that it's just kind of like, it's just a natural thing that tends to happen. So I think in that regard, when it comes to whether it's hobbies or, values or whatever whether it's friendships relationships or otherwise you know who you surround yourself mat like it matters a shit ton because you start to like normalize and think the same ways and do the same things and if things like smoking and drinking and whatever like aren't things you want to be doing you're still going to probably experience those types of environments if you're hanging out with people who do those types of things you know so and i think it becomes a lot more important once you're like out of college too because in college you don't necessarily always have the biggest like say in who you're around you know constantly but once you're on your own it you know I could just never see anyone ever all day and that would be my choice you know yeah and the other thing with that too is like you're again like that phrase is so true where show me your friends I'll show you your future Mm -hmm. you know and that and that goes into that's exactly what you were saying so it's super important okay this this I really wanted to talk about because um without sharing too much in my life, (laughs) I have had my fair share of actually dating and then, um, hanging out and then dating. But I want to know what dating the definition means to you, because it's a super, it's a super important thing. And I feel like women naturally, like, I'm sorry if this is going to cause heat on me (laughs) correctly here because you are, but like, I feel like women care more about that phrase or word and how you word what relationship, what type of relationship you're in more than more so than guys. However, I have noticed that I care more about it than I've ever thought I did, but I want to know what you think the definition of dating is and like how you would describe all of those. Yeah. I'm um, okay. So, well, I don't, I don't really think it's like a woman versus a man thing. I, I mean, like, I know people say that, yeah. but I, I don't really think it is like that necessarily. I think that like women tend to, um, 
I don't know. Like, I guess, like, there's a lot of studies done about, like, how the female brain is really very different from the male brain in a lot of ways and the way we process things. Like, that's a, that's a fact. Like, people like to think, no, we're all the same. We're all equal. But, like, no, there's a, def- no, there's a scientific different. difference in our brains. Yeah, there mm-hmm. 100% is. Which changes the outlook of how we process certain things and maybe, like, dating and relationships is part of that. So there's probably that. Um, I would say, like, this is funny because I had the same conversation with one of my friends, like, literally, like, last Friday night about dating versus casual dating versus serious dating I think to me um I don't I'm not a huge person with labels either I think that like I don't really care what you want to label it um it's more about like do I enjoy spending my time with you and if I do then I'm going to continue doing that and if I don't then I'm not going to and I kind of like treat that maybe it's a maybe it's, there's negative there's probably negative uh, aspects to that as well but I feel like for me it's like either I like you or I don't and it's like if I value your you know your friendship and whatever you know time is my most valuable thing that I have right so if I'm not going to go waste time on friendships that I don't think are worth it right or or something like that I think that's kind of like sounds a little bit negative but at the same time like it's true like how you spend your time is it's everything you know and I think that when it comes to, to dating I think one thing like I don't know I guess for me when it comes to like a, a guy and a girl like romantic relationship like that kind of dating for me is kind of like I it's like you're seeing someone exclusively I also this other thing too is like I think it's really okay I'm, kinda all, <laughs> I'm all over I'm all over but I feel like I'm writing an essay out loud that's um, good okay so I'm watching a show too hot to handle okay so I don't know if anyone knows about oh too hot God. to handle <laughs> such a good show it's literally addicting okay but in that show you're like it's like five girls five guys and you meet them and you're supposed to like find someone you're supposed to be with or whatever right but I think that like it takes time to form a connection with somebody and like you can't do it by like just being around just that person right so obviously too hot to handle is a reality tv show so it's a lot different than real life but point is that when you're with when you're trying in my opinion to actively date someone right like make them your boyfriend or girlfriend like make them someone you're genuinely gonna put a lot of time and effort into it's hard to do that if you're also like sleeping with somebody else or like talking to somebody else every day, all day. And I think that like the common really? perception is that is that I know it's like <laughs> but people go, but like, okay, but I want to be able to like talk to multiple people at a time. It's like, okay, well, that's fine as long as as long as every other person that you're talking to is on the same page that like you are not serious about them whatsoever. And like you just want to cause at that point, then you're all just friends, right? Yeah, like, yeah, and then well, yeah, a little more than that, but yeah. But yeah, but you know what I mean? I, I just feel like one of your like, like people say, oh, like, that's why it's hard for me to differentiate between like friendship and like friends with benefits and then like casually dating and then like serious dating. Because I feel like if you're dating someone, you're dating someone, no matter what, whether it's casual or serious or the otherwise, like if you're spending time with someone one-on-one to get to know them, to know if that's like going to be someone that you could find yourself being a partner with, right? Like it's hard to do that. I feel like fucking someone else on the side or like talking to your ex-girlfriend or like, bouncing around you know what I mean so I don't know I guess it's not like a really good answer to the question but I guess like that's kind of what defines dating for me is like is it one person and is it like that's what you're investing your, investing your time in you know because it's really and same thing goes for friendships like I feel like my good friend Ava that I'm friends with now in LA mm-hmm. I feel like one thing that like has made our friendship really strong is that like when we kind of became friends like sure we had our old hometown friends college friends whatever but we kind of only had each other. And so we spent a lot of time cultivating our friendship, right? Like going to hang out, going to get drinks, spending time in groups, going, enjoying different hobbies, working out, like, you know, all these different things that allowed us to like one-on-one cultivate our friendship. So now when we go hang out in a group setting, like her and I are really good friends and then we can get to know other people, but like, that was really loud. I'm sorry. That was (laughs) loud. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it just takes time to cultivate friendships. Obviously the thing about Val Robbins said it takes time to get close to somebody, um, and if you're doing that with like a bunch of people, like I think your brain tends to I think your brain tends to overload more than people think it does. And you can't really form a meaningful connection with anybody when you're, you know, talking to a bunch of people or something like that. So my friend and I were talking about this today and we were wondering if it if it's different because I don't think people talk about dating the way that they do like now like if if you look at high school and middle school and whatever like those people those younger people and then you have older people too but nowadays do you think that like our generation or anything like was like would you like to be my girlfriend or do you think it just happens you think it's just like we're dating now like oh we're dating okay cool because 
from my concept and what's happened to me in the past is like you you find this person and you, and you become friends with them or and or you just talk to them constantly and what that does is that builds a repertoire of m- many things your your information on them grows your um your opinion on them grows you find out their morals their values their this that and all of that's super important but what happens is like eventually there's a line where it's like okay well i'm not talking to my buddy every single night like this you know and so that's where it's different and so how do you like do you think that happens like we're just like we're dating now or like would you like to be my girlfriend like i don't know that just doesn't seem like that's how it is anymore but i don't know if that's a bad thing you know i don't know yeah i don't know i don't know if it's a bad thing either i think that like but i've kind of agree with you like i think that honestly if there's not a lot of like will you be my girlfriend will you be my boyfriend type of deal anymore um and i think that's like the thing is like people that are significantly older than us listening to this probably be like well it's generation and uh, you know but like no but we're living in the generation we are the age that people are when they're dating people and like that's just how it is people aren't asking you to be their boyfriend or be their girlfriend um it kind of happens naturally and i think it kind of happens when like people have you have mutual understanding of like hey like I'm spending a lot of my time with you and you're spending a lot of your time with me. And that's that. <laughs> and that's, and I think the difference is now, like also we can like, we have constant communication with the people that we talk to. So if I want to text somebody every single day, all day, I can, that wasn't the deal. However yeah. many, you know, 20 years ago, whatever, like that wasn't the case because it the award didn't have as many cell phones and there wasn't, you know, like, so For I sure. think that like, I think that's a big difference too, is like before it's like, okay, we went on a couple of dates. Will you be my girlfriend? And then, then, then they have a mutual understanding. Okay, I'm your girlfriend. I'm your boyfriend. And we don't need to talk every single day because, like, we know that. We're, like, once you become boyfriend and girlfriend with someone, like, officially, right? Like, you're not going to be texting 24-7 all the time. I mean, it's exhausting. Like, you hang out if you want to talk. No, like, you hang out if you want to talk about stuff and, like, just chat about life. Then, like, you hang out and grab a drink. Like, you don't sit there and text all the time from afar. Unless you're doing long distance, that's a different case. But, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I feel like, I feel like that's the difference in, like, today's dating of like oh are we boyfriend and girlfriend like it comes from a mutual understanding and I think also for people that are listening like if you're with if you're like in a situation ship right with someone that you're kind of like oh I like would like for them to be like my boyfriend but I don't want to ask but like you'll know and like you both in my experiences at least like you both kind of feel it you know you both kind of feel when like okay like this is lit like this is the person I enjoy spending time with like I don't this need- is lit no but like you don't like you feel you feel inside like I am satisfied with like this person. I don't need to be spending time with all these other like women or, or whatever. Or, I mean, you know, women for you, men for me, whatever, you yeah. know, like you don't have to, yeah. Divvy up your time. I think you'll end up wanting to, and like, I think that's how you form meaningful connections too, is like spending time with, again, like I said, one person, you know? So, and that's kind of how I approach like the dating and like, the boyfriend and girlfriend thing. I mean, cause there's so many different aspects of it you know like there's the like you said casual dating there's dating there's um you know serious there's friends with benefits there's all that so it's it's really it's really tough because i think it's hard if you guys aren't on the same page and the best thing for that is just communication right like yeah the, keep the, keep the comms high keep the comms high yeah and like that's a huge thing cuz I think the biggest thing for me was, and I started this after my relationship, like a real relationship. And that was being honest with that person 24 seven. Like, I'm not saying that I was lying. She's laughing right now, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not saying that I was lying during that, that time that I was in the relationship. But the thing is, is like, I wasn't upfront about my feelings on certain situations and deals right away. And I think it's super important to do that because it, because it, it, ha- you have that conversation of what you should be doing, what you were expecting, what you think. Right. And that's huge, huge. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, well, I mean, obviously being honest is huge, but having communicate, <laughs> like, but like having good communication, you know, like, I don't know, people overlook like, it really just is like the simple things in relationships. You know what I mean? Like when it, when it yeah. comes down to it, you ask the people in the best marriages, it's just the simple things. It's just communicating. It's just like being honest about shit. It's just about like talking through problems instead of having these like blow up fights that lead to just, you know, di- absolute disasters. Like I just feel like it comes from straight communication. And, and again, like, um, <clears throat> I don't think I kind of like have learned about, I guess more recently is like, 
that which now this isn't like i don't know how to say this without it being like super negative <laughs> it's okay no like okay so like i read a book i read a book the seven husbands of evelyn hugo okay wow and in in this book i know a lot of husbands um but in this book um she it's like it's it's not real right but um the point is <laughs> the, the point that i'm trying to make is um, yep. i guess like what i was trying to say was that i feel like sometimes um like my friend recently was telling about her parents and she's like i feel like they've just like been good partners this whole year they're good partners in raising kids and like running their like doctor office thing whatever you know and they're partners and like that's sick but like they're not in love and they haven't ever been in love and maybe they were for like a stint in the beginning and then they had three kids and now they aren't in love anymore you know I don't know like I just feel like you know and obviously like things change and circumstances are very unique to every individual so it's hard to like judge or or even like talk about it when it's not your own situation but I feel like I feel like even in our like day-to-day life now like at least where I'm at in my age I feel like so many people just like want to be in relationships I mean there's probably equally amount that like are like screw that I want to be single yeah but I have like I have another good friend who like just like wants a boyfriend so badly and I'm like dude but, but for what though because it's like you should be your own partner like you like obviously finding a partner to be with to like love and cherish and all these different things is amazing but at the same time it's like don't just like go find a boyfriend to find a boyfriend like don't just have a partner to have a partner because at the end of the day, like, you can have, like, some of my best, like, partners in life are, like, my best girlfriends. Like, I call about everything. I talk to about everything yeah. all the time. And and I have a boyfriend, and that's great. But, like, I have, like, my my real partners. You know what I mean? And I think that um, my boyfriend's obviously a great partner in my life, too. But it's just, like, they're your life partner. There's, like, life partners, and there's relationship partners. And, like, there's all these different nuances. And I think sometimes it all gets kind of, like, lost in translation when, like, you're young and you're dating. And I think that's, like, but like to me that's like kind of the whole point of like you are young and you're just dating and like it should be fun you know and there shouldn't be all the stress to like date and find your partner and get married and this whole like you meet someone and hell yeah like you know that's like for a different stage in your life I feel like and I feel like I'm not even there yet either you know so I don't know that's kind of all over the place that might not even need to go in the podcast but I feel like that's something I wanted to no, say. No that's good you know what I think the biggest thing and factor is with that though is romanticizing in social media. And they go hand to hand. And that's the issue. I think, yeah. of, you know, even including me, like there's a lot of times where it's like, damn, like that being able to have that person where it's like, you know, you see the TikToks and you're on couple talk or whatever it is. And it's like, it, it's hard because you are see you, that. Are, are you on couple talk? No, I have some that float here and there, but I think the, you know, the issue is that like when you're on there, you're just, it's just, it constantly like, it shows you all the good parts but it doesn't show you the fights it doesn't show you the bickering back and forth the the sharing of time the figuring how to balance it all through everything you know i think that's the biggest thing for me balance i mean i think it is for everybody but especially me i love to do the things that i love to do i I love to do my hobbies i love working out that's an important necessity that i need in my life hanging out with friends you know, and all of those things are super important and, and, and need to come to a balance when you're also in a relationship. This can go very different ways, but I want to kind of put it here. L- let's go to this dating to date or dating to marry. I don't think it's that black and white. And we've talked about this full on the past one, but yeah, no. let's talk about that. Let's dive into it. Why do you think it's not black and white? Can you describe that to us then? Um. Okay. So I, in the last time I was on the podcast, I remembered very distinctively talking about um, how dating is like buying a new car <laughs> and yeah. I still live, I still live by that, by the way, but um, I feel like that's, I don't know, you know, I don't know. I feel like I've learned so much in the last year, just like being by myself and like how much harder it is to meet people um, and also like how much more valuable my time is like. So for those of you that like don't know, so this is kind of where I'm at. So I graduated right last May from Gonzaga, finished school, the whole bit. Uh, I moved to Los Angeles like um, three weeks later and I've been living in LA by myself ever since. And um, meeting people is really hard in your 20s and finding friends is really hard in your 20s. And I have come to value my free time so much more and like value my me time so much more. Like I get home from work and I go, okay, I get home from work. I have X amount of hours until I sleep. Like, what am I going to do with that time? And if it involves, like, 
I will not schedule plans to hang out with someone that I genuinely am just like eh about because for me I'm just like that's a waste of an hour I'd rather like literally take a nap or just like hang out by myself or like read yeah. a book like and like when you're in college like you kind of want to be constantly doing stuff I think like the vibe is a lot different but when you're older and like in your 20s and you're kind of by yourself like I just feel like, like you know time becomes so much more valuable and so when it comes to like dating to date or dating to marry like I think it's really fun to like date just to date and like go on dates and like have fun and like if you're gonna go on a date with someone like that's great and if it works out like go on another you know but I think it comes down to like what makes you the happiest and like if you feel like you're just like dating a bunch of people and like nothing's working out like the dates aren't working out like what you don't like anybody or whatever like then maybe kind of reevaluate like should I just be like dating to marry like or maybe being a little bit more selective about the dates you go on I think that's kind of like the biggest difference it's like are you dating to date and you're gonna date anybody or are you dating to marry in the sense of like you're being very selective with like who you choose to go on a date with and be like this is a date you know what I mean because like you go hang out with someone and then you're like okay cool like you're really fun but like we're just friends you know like Versus like, hey, I want to schedule a date with you. Like, this is something I want to invest time in and getting to know you and getting to go on the state and spending genuine time, like one-on-one, no phones. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like my perspective has changed on it a lot. It's still very fluid. And I think that um, dating to marry is really hard. Also, like in a pandemic when like well, you can't actually meet people. I don't know there's that and i think there's also the fact of like i I love what you said because you said like date and go and have fun like that's what the whole thing is it's about like meeting new people exploring that and if they're not the one they're not the one like whatever but and it does suck because you can get hurt really easily because some somebody can be more invested than you and vice versa whatever you know but i think the the thing with dating to marry is i think that's really hard to do because how, how do you how do you the the concept i understand but like this is what I think of. Let me give you the definition of dating to marry to me. And then that will make sense. Dating to marry would be dating somebody right away because you're like, Oh, I can see myself with them after knowing them for what, maybe two weeks or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense to me because you can only learn so much about a person. Right. And like you said, like you're going to go through those stages of doing that. So, so how can you judge something based on two weeks or whatever it may be, you know, to marry that person i mean like obviously you're not gonna propose right there but like you obviously whoever you're going to go on a date with i would think anyways this is my my thing my understanding of it is like you're gonna see yourself with like you could and you like romanticize it or whatever you wanted to do which can be dangerous but like you know what i mean like you can see yourself with that person being together because otherwise it doesn't really make yeah. any sense to go out and do it otherwise it's not a date it's a friend thing like you know what i mean yeah yeah that's so, true and i want to like i feel like i also want to clarify like we're like you and i like we're just talking to talk right like there's like there's no science behind any of this stuff it's very really nuanced i know yeah. people like freaking mom and dad like they they dated them each other exclusively for three months they got engaged they got married they've been married for 25 years and it's been fucking great you know what i mean like yeah obviously like behind the scenes you know we don't know everything obviously but like for the most part then okay so yeah. the, i think the point is like that like everything that we talk about is very nuanced you know but in general i just feel like i agree with you it's kind of like but if you're i yeah i agree because i feel like if you're gonna date someone and you're gonna spend you know multiple friday nights multiple saturday mornings multiple months of like dating someone and getting to know them like i think it's a little bit unrealistic to think that you wouldn't start thinking like do i see a future with this person you yeah. know because because at the end of the day like isn't that why we're dating isn't that what we're looking for because you can go on a bunch of like like i don't know it sounds weird but like friend hangouts you can go hang out with a bunch of random guys and girls that are all friends and and go meet people that way too and like that's not a date that's just like you hanging out and getting to know people you know and not like dating but i think after i think after a certain point if you're dating someone seriously if you're you know seeing them religiously investing time in them getting to know them they're getting to know you you know whatever like then at that point like you are kind of like you know should be thinking like you know I'm kind of dating to marry in the sense of like I should be thinking like do I see myself having a future with this person and if the answer right away is like what not really because of like xyz well then like that might be a time where you go okay well then why am I spending all this time why am I spending all this time getting to know him and getting to know his family letting him into my life and and all this stuff if I'm not really gonna end up 
being with him long term, you know? And I do think there's another factor in it though that like there's a lot of um people that come into your life at different times and yeah. they and they kind of like they always teach you something, right? And I feel like mm-hmm. shout out Mel Robbins, part three. <laughs> but like she but she described this really well in her podcast that she talked about with in uh, with Alex Cooper was like, you know, kind of like a it's like a I think it's like the metaphor is like a tree, a branch, and it's leaves. So you have people that are leaves that come into your life for a season. So they're there. Leaves are important, but like eventually they fall and they die off. That's okay. Okay. They don't last very long. Mm-hmm. And then, and, and, you know, and you're the tree, right? And then the, the branches of the tree are the friends that, you know, they, a storm comes through and, you know, maybe a couple break, but like some stay through, you know what I mean? And that kind of stuff. And they, they last a little bit longer, but some of those relationships, like sometimes those still break. You know what I mean? They don't weather every single storm. They don't last forever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. And then you have friends that are like the roots of the tree, right? That like, they're there no matter what. Come storm, high water, whatever, you know, whatever the terms are, like come whatever comes your way in lifetime, which is a shitload. You know what I mean? Like the roots are always there. They don't go anywhere. And I think that's kind of how she describes like the friendships. And like, it's not that the leaves are any less important or more important than the roots. They're just different and they serve very different purposes. And so in your life, when you're dating people, maybe you date someone for a season and then you have that self-reflection moment and you go, well, dang, I don't really see a future here because of, you know, we have all these different, you know, values and, and goals and whatever. And like, then there, that's a branch or that's a leaf and then off they go and you meet someone else, you know? And so I think it kind of depends, but if you're with someone for like a really long time, um, and you're kind of thinking like, oh, they might be a root, <laughs> you know, in, in the life, you know, tree, friendship term, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's a little bit more serious. And I think that um, that's a little bit harder to de- differentiate too, once you're in it for a while too. Well, it is. I want to add something. I was listening to a podcast today before this and I, and why is, th- why is my hand raised? I don't See know that? what that, yeah. Well, I, well, I'm going to lower that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was listening to a podcast and it was talking about, it said, uh, a lot of the times we are scared about things in relationships or before relationships, when you're just in the talking phase or whatever it may be that haven't even happened yeah. n- nor will, you know what I mean? Like you don't know for sure, but a lot of that time. And I think that's where a lot of like anxiety and fear and all of that inducing stuff. That is what happens is we think about these possibilities because we all want to make sure, and I, I don't think I'm alone in this. We all want to make sure we don't waste our time, right? Because it's very mm-hmm. it's the most valuable thing. So how can we battle that? Because it's like, I, can't, I really love your piece on having fun, going out there, ex- like just, just doing it, just date, just not even like, that doesn't mean date a million people, but just being with that person so selective, like what if you have a connection, that's super important. So like, how do we not waste, waste time with that? Like, you know, how, how do you look at it? Like not wasting time? Because if, if you do this thing and, and let's say you find this girl, you date her for like a little bit and it doesn't work out. Well, then what do you do? Like, because it's not, I always look, sorry. I always look at it. Like no matter what, I'm going to learn a lesson from here and I'm going to yeah. like gain experience from this person. So my outlook is always usually positive on it but it is hard to stay positive on it because i do care about my time a lot so how do you factor that in of making sure that you're not wasting your time in quotation marks like i think i mean for me like i just think it's simple i think it's like if you're having fun in that moment then like that's not wasting time like you're you're having a memory you're ha- create, you're having an experience like you're learning you're growing Maybe like you're even hurting during that process, but sometimes like you have to hurt to like get to the other side, you know, I feel like, yeah, I feel like sometimes it's difficult, but I, but I also think it comes like, you also need to be self-aware. And I think that's the biggest key. So it's like, you know, sure. You're going to go on these dates. You're going to go meet people. You're going to go hang out with people. You're going to go to parties. You're going to whatever. Can you hear the dog barking? Yeah, that's right. Keep going. Okay. Um, anyways, we're going to go do all this stuff, right? And maybe you're going to date someone for multiple years. Okay. And then you're going to hit a point in your life and you're going to want to maybe get, take a new job or you're going to want to move cities. You're going to want to do something. Right. 
And like, I had this moment, like not very long ago where I had to sit down with my partner and be like, okay, hey, listen. So like, here's like my trajectory of my life. Here's some things I want to go and do, right? I don't have like a set five-year plan, right? Like I'm not, you know, going to be like all disappointed if something doesn't work out. But my point is, it's like, you have this moment where like, okay, you've been together for a certain amount of time, you sit down, you self-reflect and say, okay, I want to go do X, Y, and Z. You want to go do A, B, and C. Those don't line up. So yes, indeed, it is wasting my time to go to try to like mend a relationship when we're just like going the opposite direction. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, I don't know. It, it's very subjective to the individuals, but at the same time, I think you're not wasting your time if you're having fun, if you're making a memory, if you're learning and growing from something, you know, that's not a waste of time. Um, and it becomes a waste of time when you're no longer learning and you're no longer growing and you're no longer feeling like, um, fulfilled by that experience, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I think one of the biggest things that, I, you know, and I've had this happen to me in my life before too, but, um, what's your advice on, because see that's the problem you can live in the moment you can have fun right but at the end of the day there's also going to be that factor of hey guess what i'm graduating college soon or hey guess what i'm getting a new job somewhere or i just got offered a new job or i have to move schools whatever that may be so how do you combat that because that comes up and let's say you know you're in the talking phase how, like what do you even do with that because when you're in a relationship it's a different thing because you are now committed to that person yeah you're maybe you know, committed hopefully, yeah hopefully um you know to a certain point so yeah. it you know it's a hard thing but like yeah if you're if you're moving or you're doing this or you're doing that like how do you do because like i said before when you put yourself on the line and you're with somebody else your hobbies become their hobby everything about their life becomes yours that is now a factor whether you like it or not like you are going to do whatever you want to do right but it's yeah. going to suck if that other person doesn't want to move to that place or it's going to suck, you know, vice versa. So what do you do with that knowledge then if you know firsthand? Because I would like to think that you don't want to use that as and I don't mean it as an excuse, but like you want to use that almost as like a thing to help strengthen your bond. Would you enjoy the moment now or would you cut it off because it might save you time, pain, whatever later? That's the hardest decision I think a lot of people have to make sometimes. And I don't know what to do with that. You know, like, yeah, what do do with that? mm -hmm. that's a really good question. I think that like, I think it, I mean, again, like, I feel like I have to keep saying like, this is subjective. This is very unique because it's so unique to every single person. But yeah. I would say like my thoughts on it in general, um, it's just like, you know, like there there is an element of like I want to live in the moment and I want to have fun I want to go do this this and this but at the end of the day if you know you're leaving if you know it's not going to work out if you know that you know whatever like you're kind of just like in my opinion like delaying the inevitable well, and I hold think on that here how do we how do we factor and how do we think that like it's not going to work out because well, there I, is... I think it's more like if you know like if you know like okay, okay. so like let's just say like uh, I don't even know. Like, let's just, let's say I'm talking to a guy and I'm graduating college and he still has a year left of college at that place. And he can't, he's not going to transfer schools. He's not going to do whatever. He's got a year left at Gonzaga and I'm graduating May 1, right? Then yeah. I think you have, you have the conversation like, hey, do we want to do, on, like, if it's someone that you absolutely like care about and value in your life, then you have the conversation like, hey, like you, I'm going to be leaving now. Let's just, this is just an example. I'm going to be leaving school right i'm graduating yeah. so you, the options are kind of like you know you come with me and transfer which probably isn't viable right um yeah. i don't leave which doesn't really work out because i'm graduating or maybe we try long distance right like that's let's say that's those are the three options and the most and then you have the conversation okay so why are we going to do option a b or c and then you go okay well i don't want to do i don't i can't stay okay well i can't leave okay well i do want to do long distance and the answer is kind of like, no, I don't really want to do long distance. Then I think in that case, it's like, okay, so if, if you know, like come the end of the month, like you're going to not do long distance and you guys are just going to break up. It's like, well, then why delay the inevitable? Like, yeah, sure. You, you can go on a few more dates, have, have a little more fun. But I think it's more like if you know versus not knowing. Now, 
let's say like you're in a situation ship and you're kind of talking to someone and it's not super serious you're not dating necessarily but like if you really like them you care about them whatever like I think it's just like having the conversation of like hey like I'm really enjoying this I really want to like take the next step and see where this goes is that something you're open to and then if they go well no I'm not then it's like okay well then I'm not gonna like for lack of better words like waste my time Mm -hmm. like you know investing because I don't know because if that's the case and they say like no I'm not ready to do that then like the then like that's their answer the answer is I'm not ready and then then you know okay well they're not ready so either I stick around and make some more like in the in the moment fun memories with them and then later the same shit happens regardless and then if it's meant to be it'll be either way whether you guys whether you wait it out for the next couple months and like do your shit or like you just go your separate ways in the moment I don't know I think it's complicated but I think that um you know in God's timing is like a really like huge phrase that I use in my life it's like in God's timing and like what's meant to be will be so if yeah if, if you feel like it's a waste of time then like at the end of the day like it's meant to be it'll be whether you guys break up now break up later like whatever but I don't I don't for me personally I don't see the point in like delaying the inevitable if the inevitable is like you're gonna break up you're gonna go your separate ways like why spend more time with them doing stuff when you know she's not going to work out because you could spend the time looking for someone new finding finding your actual person you're supposed to be with and not someone that's just going to like you know steal your good energy you know yeah i think it's way more complicated than that deep down well, yeah, maybe, yeah or or maybe it's super simple i think as humans we tend you know tend to complicate things and, and i think that's where it runs into a lot of troubles because we just want everything to be simple, but yet it's actually false. I mean, there are studies and and things that I've read up on and, you know, I'm by no means some master, but I do know that we do like complications in our life. We like having something that doesn't always work right. And it's a fact. Mm-hmm. We, we think that we love everything to be so simple, but it's just like that ideology of, um, of i want to say zootopia that's not what it is um utopia Mm. right like everything is that that's not gonna be fun there's nothing there like you know what i mean so there's that concept with it i think the other thing that i wanted to talk about like um was boundaries and how important they are in a relationship oh god yeah i mean you know what like how important are they and how do you really set said boundaries um obviously it's your experience but that's yeah what I, I um personally i struggle with setting boundaries um i don't know where that comes from <laughs> or why that is the case as of right now in my life but i definitely think that i'm someone who struggles to set boundaries on things um i think that boundaries are necessary though because i think at the end of the day no matter how much you love someone, no matter how much that you think that like someone's never going to hurt you or never do anything to hurt you or, or whatever it is that you think, Mm -hmm. like, that's just not real. That's just not real life. And humans, um, they fuck up and they make mistakes and they hurt other people. And whether it's intentional or not, like it always happens. And I think just like setting boundaries of like what you're okay to deal with and what you're not okay to deal with. And I think that at different times in my life, I've set different boundaries and then been able to be like, okay, like I had this boundary set for a super long time because of like this traumatic event that I experienced. I feel healed from that. I feel like I can let down part of this boundary or maybe like, you know, uh, I don't know, like maybe your partner broke your trust in some way. And now you're kind of, you as a couple are choosing to heal from that experience. Well, maybe there's certain boundaries that both of you need to kind of have in place in your life. So that way you can heal from those wounds and then revisit those boundaries later on. Like, I think it's a very, um, I think it needs to be more of like a fluid thing than Mm -hmm. like a, this is my boundary. Don't fucking cross it. Because I think at the end of the day, like for setting like these, like super, like I have friends that said that and like, if he ever did like this, like I'm breaking up with them. And it's like, well, that's tough because like, obviously when it comes to like cheating or like, you know, things like that, like that's a little bit different. That's tends to be a little bit different or treated differently. But I think when it comes to like smaller things, it's like, well, you can set all these boundaries and all these expectations and whatever you want, but they're always going to let, let, like, let you down. You know, they're always going to screw up. And, and that's not them just being terrible boyfriend or terrible girlfriend. Like, that's just like people being inherently flawed because that's just how we are, you know? 
see that's the biggest thing i think that we tend to forget which is ironic but i think we tend to forget that like we're gonna make mistakes and it's not going to be perfect 100 percent of the time or really any of the time but that's the thing i i think the what a huge thing comes down to it is are you willing to with this person are you willing to fight and grow from it like you don't need to fight fight but i mean like you fight and grow from something or do you say this person isn't what like he did this and i don't like that so you know and then you drop them because of one thing like that like that's what it comes down to because when you're building these relationships it doesn't matter it's it's friends it's family it's everything you go through stuff and that's what's yeah. important. The whole thing is, you know, if you see me at my lowest, you can see me at my, at my highest. You know what I mean? Like things like that, they're super important. So I think boundaries goes into that, but yeah, it's a hundred percent true. I mean, you, you have to grow, you have to learn with each other. And that all goes back to communication. There has yeah. to be. But I think it's important to communicate and set boundaries. Like if you have a boundary, like and it can be anything like I feel like people think it's like sexual ba- like it's sexual boundaries it's personal boundaries it's personal mm-hmm. like it's mm-hmm. family ba- like there's like all family like you know letting your family into certain things but not other things because of maybe trauma like I think that like there's literally yeah. boundaries like and I think that people set up natural boundaries in their life and until like they become self-aware of them like you don't maybe you don't notice it maybe you do it unintentionally <laughs> and it's actually a really negative thing that's like actually really affecting your life and you didn't you're like why do I feel so stuck? Well, it's because it's set up all these like mental boundaries in your head that you can't cross for whatever reason. And that's not even, none of that's even true. You know, like I think yeah. it, it comes down. I feel like one thing I've learned um, since like, you know, being on my own in my twenties, whatever, granted I'm super young, but like, regardless, it's like being super self, like being self-aware is like your, it's like the biggest gift that you can offer yourself or anybody around you, you know, like, self-aware about what boundaries you're setting and and how you're acting and, and all of these different things you know like it's so important to be that way because um the minute that you are like self-aware and like confident in your decisions moving forward that like the minute everyone else respects you and understands you and is able to communicate with you and you know and obviously like that's not true 100 percent of the time but like the majority of the time like that's, that tends to be the case it's like when you know when you know you it's a lot easier to get to know you you know, yeah. but what, but when you're scrambled and you're all over the place and you don't know what's left and right, like it's a lot harder for someone to get to know you and come into your life in a positive way because like, and again, like, it's like people like, okay, so let's say like, you're kind of really unsure. Like that's the thing, like, obviously there's really great people that like get into really bad relationships and like that become, it becomes toxic and manipulative and whatnot. But a lot of mm-hmm. times it's like, I will see a lot of my friends go into these relationships and then they get out of the relationship. Like, oh, it's because he was manipulative the whole time. It's like, okay but like were you also not like weren't you like really unsure of yourself the whole time didn't you like talk to other guys to get reassurance because you weren't confident in yourself like not saying it's okay for him to be manipulative but weren't you also playing a role and that becomes yeah once again once again back to like were you self-aware enough to realize where you went wrong too because when it, it takes two to tango whether it's fighting or whether it's relationship going great it takes two and you have to realize your part in that you know and i think again with boundaries you know like as you learn as you grow you're gonna set new ones you're gonna it's gonna change it's gonna evolve but like being self-aware of like how you're treating someone and like what you're setting you know makes a difference well that's how you grow becoming self-aware of what you're doing and what you did wrong too yeah maybe that was a really repetitive but yeah no no it's true i mean i i like that you're putting that and honing that in on self-awareness because it it is super super real so that that goes to my next question then um like self-love um we we talked about this and we hit on this but i kind of want to dive deeper into it if possible but we as humans whatever you want to call it like we should have self-love right we need to but again working on yourself and 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 having self-love for yourself, can that be possible while also being with somebody? Because you changed my mind on that. Yeah. But at first, and and I think there's a lot of motivation out there, um, motivational pictures and photos and voices and all that different stuff that is constantly talking about how we like focus on yourself first and then 
like then you can have a partner because you're going to whatever. And I agree to some extent about that. But at the same time, you can also grow and maybe it depends on the time period of whatever your growing stages. But I think that you can grow while you're also with that person. You can explore those things. And I will say that communication is a huge part of that. If you are constantly in communication with your partner, whoever they may be about where you're at and, and how you're doing things and growing, then it's a hundred percent possible. But I wanted to dive into that because you said that from the get go that you're like, it remember, like it's possible to grow while with someone yeah. else. Yeah, it is. And I think, okay, I think the perfect example of like, if someone is like, well, no, you need to be like a hundred percent, like confident in yourself, all this stuff. Before you, okay. Well then explain to me like high school sweethearts because they're going to tell me someone who meets someone else at 17 years old is the same exact person they are when they're 30. They were the same right. exact amount of confidence and I, no, that they're not, they're absolutely yeah. not. And, and they, they met and they found their partner and they said, okay, this is someone that I can do my life with that they can push me and help me and hold me to like, when I want to set new goals, they can hold me to those goals and they can do these things. And like, like, th- like to me, like, and that's what makes a great partner, you know? And like, again, there are high school sweethearts who don't work out because they are not in a place to become like partners and help each other grow. But yeah. like, you can't, but you can't tell me that someone who gets into a relationship at 17 and is later now, you know, married with three kids by 30, like is the same as that fucking person. And they're the same exact amount of confidence that they're just not. They at least and shouldn't so, be. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that's exactly where I think that like it, for me, that's why I call BS on the whole, like, oh no, you need to put yourself first and be 100%, you know, self-love and all this BS. Um, not even BS, but like all this shit before you get yeah. into a relationship. I think there's a level of, let's, you know, so let's say you don't meet your high school sweetheart. So not me and you, because now we're obviously both in college, right? So, or yep. out of college, whatever. But it's like, you know, when you're going into a relationship, okay, and maybe you have multiple relationships and they fail, it's kind of like introspective as far as, okay, like maybe I have like an anxious attachment style. Maybe like I have these things going on and that's why it's not working out. And it's not because I don't love myself or because, you know, they don't love me enough or, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's just like so many aspects of self-love. And like, for me, like, I definitely feel like confident in myself, but I feel like a, a totally different way about myself than I did like literally like off from October like I like the amount that I've grown just from October to now is like yeah so vast and I and I attribute so much of that to my friend Ava and like the conversations that we have had about her journey and this and that like I just feel like you grow and change and you know there's people that can be in your life and again those the tree branches and the leaves and the roots like there's people that are in your life for certain purposes and like you're going to grow and change with them and some are going to stick around and some aren't. And I think that like that goes for friendships, but you can't wait around for the day that you're 100% like, you know, 100% confident, 100% confident in your body, 100%. Like you can't wait around for that day. Like that's never going to come. Like there needs to be some basics that you have under wraps. Like, and, and the, for me, the basic is like, you just need to be happy. Like, am I happy? And, And like, are, and like talking to your partner, are you happy? Okay, cool. Then we can go be happy together. But like, you can't expect someone to like make you happy like that. And I think that's where, that's where like the self-love versus like, are you happy to me are very different things and you can grow in self-love and you can grow in, 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 you know, your confidence and self-awareness and all these things while you're with somebody, but to no one else is ever going to just make you happy. Like you have to be happy with yeah. yourself and your hobbies and everything else. Yeah. Not trying to fill a void, right? Yeah. Not trying to yeah. fill a hole. I don't even want to say yeah. void, but, but not trying to fill a hole because that, that I think that's where it leads you when you're just dating or messing around. Yeah. Like, because not, sorry, let me rephrase that. Cause I said dating as in like, just whatever, but I meant like just dating random people or whatever and, and going along with it. Like, I think that is part of it and, and, and messing around that you're trying to fill something that isn't there. I mean, everyone wants that somebody to lay down with that night. Everybody wants that well, you know, person. So how do you differentiate that feeling too? Sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to say like, yeah, like that's thing is like, it, like, it's okay to be in a stage. If, you, if you're in a stage of your life where you are just, just fucking, fucking everything that walks and like doing your own, but like doing your own fucking thing, like that's fine, whatever. But you, but deep down people that are doing that, they know that's going to have to add. And, and deep down yeah. also like, 
every person who's been at that stage that's now with someone, you know, officially committed, married, will tell you that they are 1000% happier now than they ever were when they were doing that. And, and any married man, any married woman, I mean, like, obviously, the healthy marriages, yeah. they will tell you that, you know, like, that's fun for a period. But at the end of the day, like, that's not what humans really desire to have is like this. I, uh, but I guess I don't know, because I don't know, I guess now I'm gonna self contradict because that was like, that's, I guess what I always had thought. But I also know that like, you know, humans are animals, right? And they are hardwired to like, technically like there I mean I don't know all the science behind it all and maybe I'm someone can drop a link or something but like humans also from like things that I've heard read whatever that humans are also somewhat hardwired to not be monogamous and so like that's why marriage is so like sacred is because when you find someone to be monogamous with like that's such a huge deal because humans are kind of like hardwired to like want to mate with a lot of people I guess I don't know I don't know the science behind that. That's kind of self-contradicting. That's not even necessarily what I believe. I'm just putting well, it out there so people don't think like, oh my God, she's absolutely wrong because I feel like for that the, could also for happen. The people but... out there, for the people out there that don't know what monogamous, because I'm smart. I know what it means, but like, what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> monogamous just means like being with one person, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So like if you're, yeah. So mono. If you're in a mono, in mono. Mono, exactly. No, so like if you're in a monogamous relationship, you're like seeing just one individual and that's te- te- technically like what the ideal like marriage yeah. right, is. Yeah. But obviously there's people who are like not monogamous. I think it's mono- yeah, monogamy. Monogamous. People, and yeah. there's, but, there's, but there's people that I know too that are like like serial monogamous where like they only ever get into these like long-term relationships and then they literally just are in a relationship for like six months to a year and then they cheat and they start with a new one and they get and that's just how it goes for years they just do that that's like that's like a thing people i mean because they, and it's and a lot of times it stems from deeper issues like yeah okay maybe i don't have a mom or maybe i you know or whatever maybe things. i don't have a mom <laughs> <laughs> well everyone has a mom but i okay. do see what you're saying but like is your mom in your life no. yeah exactly like no but like yeah. stuff like that like i feel like it all comes like i i don't know you can read about a lot of that stuff but a lot of times that the the unhealthy relationship tendencies tend to come from some sort of like past trauma, right? Like family trauma, childhood trauma, whatever it may be. But, um, mm. but yeah, but monogamy, it's a real thing. Yeah. So how, so how do you feel like love link? Cause I feel like it's important for us to all kind of know ourselves. Right. And that goes into with self love too. So, so how do we figure out um, the love languages and, and those aspects of things that we like to do, especially like you were talking about, like the, um, attachment styles stuff like that like that's super important relationships should we know that stuff before we go into it or not like um i think you should definitely probably know how you tend to behave uh, before you enter in a relationship otherwise mm-hmm. you're gonna really be in for rude awakening when you realize holy shit like i am acting like a complete psychopath like and, you know like <laughs> everyone <laughs> like no but for reals everyone everyone reacts really differently um when they enter into relationships and it tends to stem from like past things and um attachment styles and whether you're like anxious to be with somebody or not or whatever um the thing I was going to say about love languages, though, um, I feel like the love languages play a super important role in relationships, and I feel like it's, like, overlooked, but then it was, like, kind of a trend for a while to, like, know yeah, everyone's love languages, and then now it's, now it's kind of back to being overlooked. Um, it's, like, a test you can take online to kind of learn, like, more or less what your love language is. Something I found really effective and, like, useful was, like, identifying what my love language is and then what my partner's love languages were, because one of the things I think I like read this in a book or saw it on a podcast I don't know but um was talking about how like let's say like you are a male and you are bringing your girlfriend or whatever the hell like flowers every single day right so you you go home like you finish up work you go to the store you buy stuff for dinner and you buy her a bouquet of flowers every week or whatever and she just is like pretty passive about it that doesn't doesn't really care and like that makes you feel bad because you're like why does my nice for you like why don't you care right um and I think like in that case you know that's an important identification of like what is her love language because maybe her love language isn't really receiving gifts and maybe 
maybe you buy her a bouquet of flowers and then you go hop on your phone for three hours after work and you think you did something nice for her but what she really wanted was quality time and you just gave her a bouquet of flowers and like to her that means absolutely nothing for so, sure so i think so that's an example i think it was literally the example that was like used in the podcast podcast that i listened to um talking about kind of like identifying the love languages and identifying um the things that you can do to kind of meet your partner halfway so now obviously if your partner's love language is quality time and you're doing long distance, right? Different set of issues. Okay. That's yeah. totally separate. But I think that like when it comes to, you know, I think, I think I don't even know the five. I think it's like quality time, um, physical touch, receiving gifts, maybe like giving gifts. And then like maybe one other one, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I think like, so those like, the, you know, four, four of them or so, but, um, but yeah, just identifying kind of like the ways in which like your partner feels special. And so, you know, maybe like the flowers or something, maybe you, your love language is giving gifts. So you want to like bombard them with gifts, but like that doesn't do it for them. So maybe you buy them one gift every single month, but then you also spend quality time with them the other like three or four days of the week or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, that was something I wanted to touch on because I feel like it's really simple thing to do to like sit down, like take a little quiz or whatever, to identify you guys as uh, both of your love, love languages and then like, go forward from that maybe use that to spice up spice up the relationship maybe um just get to know each other better and kind of do what makes the other person feel good so you're not just like hopelessly doing stuff because at the end of the day when you're doing something for someone else um and they don't appreciate it like that's also harmful to you in the relationship as well you know so it goes both ways for sure yeah it does let me ask you this really quick then um what's some advice that you can give people that are like 20 our age that are single right now or looking or both and then also what's some advice that you can give to people who are in a relationship and and like how to spice things up both ways both ways like you know besides that test um i'll start with the second question um okay. actually maybe i won't that's kind of a tough question <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know. I feel like honestly, just like investing time in the things that you both want to do, which sounds really simple. Maybe you're already doing it a little bit, but like really being intentional about it. Um, you know, like Jordan Peterson talks about like the, like literally just like, Oh, like the best way to have a marriage. Right. It's like X amount of date nights a week, X amount of like date nights with the girls, you know, all these different things. Um, and I don't know, you know, how much there is to all of that, but I feel like just identifying, you know, a little bit more of like a routine with your partner sometimes tends to help things. Um, as far as like spicing things up, like, you know, I, I guess part of me also thinks like if you're in the set, if you're in, in your twenties and you're like, well, I need to spice things up. It's like, well, then maybe <laughs> <laughs> things should be spicy. I don't know. Like, I feel like maybe, you know, but well, um, I just meant like, you know, things that people can do now to for 20s i mean more of like things that make it okay for to know that it's okay for what we're doing whether it's we're alone and we're trying to figure things out or we yeah. are with a person but we're not sure if they're the one or we are with a person and they are the one i mean there's so many different obviously variations of each but yeah, yeah i mean true. i don't i don't everyone's, mean like everyone does their own spot. Your love life but i just meant, <laughs> i just meant like you know like what are some things that like in your 20s that you know it's okay to be going through this i mean you have been going yeah. through certain stuff i'd say so. yeah okay i would say one thing i wanted to say is like um in your 20s like and i don't even say like in your 20s because maybe in your 30s too i would just say like yeah. i'm at a point in my life where i feel like post-grad things are different things are changing um you know and everyone's going to go through different parts in life and just like knowing that like where you're at is okay and knowing that maybe you're single and like, that's okay. And maybe mm -hmm. you're single and wanting a boyfriend and that's okay too. And like your time, that, that will come, that time will come, but also recognizing that wherever you're at is where you're supposed to be at maybe. And looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, okay, like, well, what things can I work on? So when a, a boyfriend does come around, I can be, you know, the best girlfriend for that person. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe I'm single and um, I have no friends because I just moved across the country. And like, that's kind of the boat that I'm in is having no friends. And guess what? Like, it's totally okay to go through periods of your life where you have no friends, but then like look yourself in the mirror. Okay. Well, I have no friends, which means I have a ton of extra free time. So how am I going to meet people? And what am I, what hobbies am I going to do to fulfill that time? And am I going to learn a new language or join a book club or, you know, focusing on yourself and the things that you want to cultivate in your own life. Um, and then recognizing kind of like, 
you're only whatever age you are whether you're listening to this at 15 or 35 like no matter what age you are you were only that age once you yeah. know and and remembering that like as much as we try to kind of rush forward to the next step the next job the next promotion graduating college graduating high school you know like you're only that age once so for whatever it's worth like enjoy that time I just feel that's really important and I feel like I've had to check myself like mentally and like realize that a lot more in this last year from graduating college than I ever have before because before you're literally told what to do for the first 20 some years of your life and now like I'm in the driver's seat and that looks a lot different now you know Mm -hmm. but um Mm -hmm. but you're in the driver's seat for the rest of your life and it's a journey but like you know constantly continue to like learn and grow whether no matter what kind of relationships or friendships you have yeah very solid advice i like that a lot actually i want to ask you i always ask three people three questions um and these questions we'll start off with one you can answer it in a sentence or as long as you want uh, you know shorter the better but uh no big deal <laughs> <laughs> okay so number one what is a daily habit that has changed your life that's a good question and i get question two and three as well no, <laughs> just answer that one. Okay. Um, to jump daily, to the next thing. daily habit that's changed my life. Um, I don't know. Having a morning routine. I think that's mine. I think that's mine. I know that not everyone needs to have one, but I feel like I have somewhat of a morning routine. It's quick. It's quick, but um, I have a morning routine. And I feel like starting my day consistently the same way every single day sets like doing things that set me up for a good day every single day tends to most of the time maybe have a better day so how they want your team it's huge very solid advice number two how would you consider your purpose in life right now if you don't know right now that's okay a lot of people don't i mean that's the whole thing but i think when i also want to add this really quick when we think of purpose i think we think of something grand or something big right and a lot of the times it, it can be but i think a lot of the times too it also could be something small your purpose is is spreading all the knowledge that you know about love and relationships and that you're passionate about that so that could be your purpose i mean i don't want to give you your answer but you know i think my purpose right now honestly is just um you know cultivating friendships and cultivating relationships wherever i go um obviously like that's something we tend to do naturally as individuals but i think that's kind of my purpose right now like i'm learning a lot and uh meeting a lot of people through through work and through friends and through friends of friends and um kind of like yeah wow. so that's that's probably my purpose right now i like that a lot number three i like i like you a lot all right number three <laughs> what's something you know that you wish others understood sometimes i feel like people understand don't understand that uh like and I have a hard time remembering this too sometimes, yeah. but I feel like people don't get that like life just like isn't that serious all the time, you know? Like not every problem is like a disaster and not like every heartbreak is like forever going to be that way. Like, I, like, yes, there's hard moments in your life, but like everything is temporary, everything will pass. And like sometimes like just checking yourself and being like, dang, like this just like really isn't that serious. Like, I think people just don't understand that, like, that's just kind of how life is sometimes. No, I like that a lot. Well, Claire, thank you so much for being on here. I know other people are definitely going to love this podcast, and I definitely did, and we'll have to have you on another one. But, part three coming soon. Part three coming soon. But seriously, part- thank you for your time today and your yeah. all your sound advice. Thank you. I love you. All right. I love you, too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. That's